All right, everybody, here we are. I hope it's not too dark out here. The finished product of the old 4 RTV 900 diesel. Here's the tailgate that I made, that I sectioned from two Kubota sides. Um, I didn't do no body work. I just did it quick here. As you can see, the other side, you see where I sectioned it. That, that was a tail, that was a side from a Kubota RTV. I used two sides from an old Kubota RTV. I didn't have a tailgate. So I cut one side down the center, took a three inch section from the other side and put it in the middle and put it together because I didn't have a gate here. This is the mule bed, Kawasaki mule bed, which is a bolt right on product. If you want a Kawasaki mule and you need a gate for the RTV, well, for your Kubota, this will bolt right on. Um, I put the fenders on, made some quick mud flaps out of some uh, dump truck flaps that I had. I had one dump truck flap, so I um, cut it all up. Added some tail lights down there. That's all I need for tail lights. Nothing special. Um, here's the voltmeter gauge. This thing is great that I added. 12.8 volts. I have it to a I have it to a constant source, so I can always charge a phone even with the uh, machine with the ignition off. And then you have an on-off switch on it also as well, so you can turn it off. Um, everything's good. I have got the pile speakers up here. If anybody's interested, those are the Pile outdoor, outdoor speakers. You can't really see too well. I apologize. They sound great. You can hear them for sure. Um, there's the winch plug I put in. Buff this thing out quick with the polisher. Cut it down. And uh, here we are. Tailgate works great. I just made some quick pins for it for a latch system. That's all. I wasn't going to go crazy here. I'm um, go for a quick ride if it's not too dark out already for you guys. Let's see.
garage, I'll turn the machine off and uh, I'll go over a couple more things. Okay guys, we're back. Um, again, we got a little bit better light. There's a finished product with the tailgate. Um, I masked off the stickers and just painted it. Oh, that's the three inches I added in the center. You can see it, but it came out pretty good. You know, I didn't do no body work or anything. Um, you can see better in here, I'll go over it again. I made my, made my uh, mud flaps again, like I said, out of regular truck uh, mud flaps. And, um, yeah, it came out pretty good. I gotta say, for a $4,500 machine, uh, I didn't expect and want to do all the work I had to do to it, but, well, we are where we are now. I had to. I needed this machine to work. So... Um, yeah, there it is, everybody. If you didn't hear me again before and you're watching this video, tractor.net, that's the forum to join. You want help with whatever you're doing, you'll find a nothing but a nicer group of guys. There's the, um, the two sides. That was one side here. That was one side of the Kubota. And, uh, this is the other side of it. <laughs> I took that section out of it and I used the other side for my tailgate. Um, and there's my old tailgate, obviously. And see how they are? It, that's, just, that's just the angle line there. And this and the spring latch here was used for the angle line. I was going to reuse it. That's why I shaved everything off here. But it was just too much... Uh, it was another day and a half worth of work just to make that work right. When I already had a latch system, I just had to weld a, weld a bolt in here for this. It was a lot easier to weld a grade A bolt and then to, to cut all this out and, and put that. It wasn't worth it. You know, it just wasn't worth it. And a lot of times I'm not going to use both latches. I'm just going to use one so I don't have to sit around with two hands and open the tailgate. I can just pop one side off and I'll be good. Um, again... I'll go over it quick. There's the uh, reinforcement I did. There's a section where I sectioned it. And I have a piece of aluminum. I'll show it to you quick right now. That will be going. Is this it? I think this is it. Yeah. This will be going. This. Oh, that's not it. I was going to say, I had a perfect piece already made for it. Not sure what I did with it. I have a piece I already made for this. I'm not sure what the heck I did with it. Hopefully I didn't leave it outside. I might have left it outside. But I have a piece of aluminum that's um already cut. That's already cut. That will be going from about here right to the bottom. This whole thing will be covered with aluminum. So that's why it looks like it, did, it does right now. I'm going to POR this with some rust proofing. Quick, drill two holes. Like I said, I drill holes in everything I have. Drill a 3 8 hole here, a 3 8 hole here. Fill it up with some fluid film. Just like I did with everything else. Everything here is filled with fluid film. And if you watch my other videos, you'll see how to make a nice little uh, straw. A nice long straw. Three or four feet long, whatever length you need to be able to get in all your pipes. This is all fluid filmed. This is fluid film. My chassis that I made is all brand new. That's fluid filmed. Um, everything's all full of fluid film. The only thing I didn't do yet is a tailgate and this, but this will be done tomorrow. Here's a better look at those pile speakers that I bought. I have the box here. I'll show them to you. They sound absolutely terrific. You can hear them so well over the diesel engine without any problem. I highly recommend them. Now, they're only a couple weeks old. So I don't know how long they're going to last. I would imagine they're going to be okay, especially being under the roof. But they are meant for outdoors. They're boat speakers. They're meant to be on boat, on boat, um, you know, the big uh, 
the big rack they have on the outside of boats. So I would imagine they'll be fine. Um, they weren't very expensive and they are powered. It's got an amplifier built into it. So I have that just for my Bluetooth. I hit the Bluetooth. There's a Bluetooth switch I have to a powered source right there. That's always got power. Let's see if you can hear them. Yep, there they are. They just kicked on. So I can play my radio through it. And the key doesn't have to be on. Also, there is an RCA plug in the back. So I can hook this to a radio if I wanted to. I just didn't need a radio. Um, but yeah, the guys wanted a finished product. Like I said, I paid $4,500 for the machine. If you watched all the videos. Um, yep. <laughs> I paid $4,500 for the machine. But... I put a brand, I rebuilt the motor. I had two motors. Well, that's a whole big story. I'm not going to get into it. But the motor is completely brand new now, literally brand new. Um, and I have a new chassis. I built a new chassis, basically. 60% uh, uh, of the chassis is brand new now, too. Um, the rest is just the frame in the back, which is a cage, which is never a problem. But everything in the back is fluid film, too. Everything here I drilled holes in. It's all full of fluid film. Um, I think that's about it, guys. I'm not sure. This is already getting into 12 minutes long, I think, here. Um, if any guys on the forum, you know how to contact me. Um, so I can go back up with the date one more time. The square tubing, the square stock under here, you see my last video, how it fills up with water, turns to ice if you're in a bad climate, and it will make the square stock in the round stock, the square tubing and the round tubing. Make sure you drill holes in there. Let the water out, fill it with fluid film. Same with here. That's got all fluid film in it, and uh, everything else underneath has all been filled as I went through this thing. I do have to make a cover here. I'm going to make a cover here for the uh, electronics. I'm going to have a little flap I'm going to put. I got an old truck tire in a tube. I'm going to rivet to, rivet to this and have it hang down about three inches. That way it covers the tailgate. If you are throwing any mulch, it, I won't be doing that, mostly for firewood. But if stuff does crap doesn't get in there and get under your motor, I'm going to have an old truck tire in a tube here. So when the gate goes up and down, it'll just flop the tire tube in and out. But it'll always be protecting the inside of here. Like I said, it's a brand new motor, so I don't want to be uh, keeping it as nice as I can anyway. That's for sure. But um, yeah, the reinforcement here under the under the gate. You can't really see crap. That's quarter inch uh, C channel, top and bottom, where the piston goes. So it's more than sturdy enough. And. Um, Yep, that's about it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, just comment below. And uh, if you're watching this and you're not part of the forum, you know, the guys from the forum that I know, that I've met in there, again, it's tractor.net. I can't say enough. I can say one thing. Once I buff this out, um, I, you can see how well this matches, obviously. That paint, oh, I'll show you the paint that I used. And it does match. Uh, you can see for yourself on the camera anyway. Alice Chamba's orange. The paint's terrible to work with. It sucks to work with. It is a great paint. People who use it don't like it. They don't want to have patience. The problem is it takes a long time to cure. And if you want to sand it and work with it like you're going to do body work, it takes a while. You just have to have patience with this stuff. Or just go to the body shop, go to the uh, paint store, and spend three hundred on paint, and uh, you can uh, you can prime it, paint it, and be sanding it and buffing it the same day. <laughs> With this stuff, you're not going to do that, but it does come out good. This paint is good paint; just takes a while. And like I said, it, I actually see the last video; it does match beautifully. I buffed this all out, and uh, I'm going to make a nice cooler right there to hold my wobbly snacks. <laughs> So the next video will show me making, a, um, like I said, a cooler with a drain hole in there for the wobbly snacks. Got to have wobbly snacks when you're out, out and about. Here's for the uh, winch. 
this is the glove box that I made from a, I got this from an old tractor. I just painted it up with some vinyl paint, made some brackets for it, and uh, now it just holds, well, it holds wobbly snacks. <laughs> and um, it holds the uh, remote for my winch. All right, that's all that's in there for now. Anyway, that's it guys. Um, people requested to see the video. Ouch, that's going to leave a mark. People requested to see the video, so finished video. So here's the finished video. Let's see if I can use my knee to make this handle go down. There we go. Put it down one more time. And um, yep. To see it all together, how it matches. On camera, I know it's tough to see, but it does match perfectly. that and uh, how do I get that in there see if it's lined up yep see how I have a bolt head the bolt head I kept on here so if you do have a stupid load in here and it's awkward it won't pull the sides out this keeps it you shouldn't be doing it anyway but it won't pull it'll help keep the sides from bowing out on you you know I have this so you got to push in see how you got to push in that's why um, I don't like things rattling, especially tailgates. So I made this. It's so it's hard to. Um, I wanted that stiff. Okay. That way it's nice and not rattling when you're freaking driving. I hate rattles. Nothing I hate more than rattles. <laughs> well, what did I do with the other one? The heck is it? Could have sworn I just had it in my hand. The hell did I do with the, uh, how about, oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, I like when things are nice and tight. I hate, said I, I, I really hate rattles, so. That's it, guys. There it is. Finished product. And um, I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching.